As medical students, you will undoubtedly have to go into theater bright and early in the morning and may likely get grilled on your anatomy by the operating surgeons. Whether the operation you are observing is a cesarean section, a laparoscopic cholecystectomy, a Whipple's procedure, or any abdominal surgery, knowing the layers of the anterior abdominal wall are important, relevant, and may prevent further questioning. This is the anatomy of the anterior abdominal wall in under three minutes. The first layer of the abdominal wall deep to the skin is the camper's fascia, a fatty fascia layer. Underneath the camper's fascia is scarpus fascia, a membranous fascia layer. Deep to the scarpus fascia are the muscular layers of the anterior abdominal wall. This includes the external oblique, which is the most superficial, the internal oblique in the middle, and the transversus abdominis muscle. Deep to the transversus abdominis is the transversalis fascia, followed by the extra peritoneal fascia. Then you've reached the parietal peritoneum, deep to which is the viscera peritoneum. Deep to all of these layers of the anterolateral abdominal wall are the abdominal viscera. This anatomy outlines the anterolateral abdominal wall, but caesareans are often mainly cutting through the midline, where the rectus abdominis lies. In this part of the abdomen, the anatomy changes at a crucial plane known as the arcuate line, which lies halfway between the umbilicus and the pubic crest. The main change above and below the arcuate line is which muscle layers are continuous with the anterior rectus sheath, superficial to the rectus abdominis muscle, and which muscle layers are continuous with the posterior rectus sheath, which is deep to the rectus abdominis muscle. Above the arcuate line, the aponeurosis of the external oblique and part of the internal oblique continue as the anterior rectus sheath. Then the posterior rectus sheath is comprised of a posterior division of the internal oblique aponeurosis, the transversus abdominis aponeurosis, and the transversalis fascia layer. Below the arcuate line, the anatomy is a bit different. Here, the anterior rectus sheath is very thick as the aponeurosis of the external oblique, internal oblique, and transversus abdominis all make up the anterior rectus sheath, superficial to the rectus abdominis muscle bulk. Posterior to the rectus abdominis is the posterior rectus sheath, which is very thin as it only contains the transversalis fascia. The anterior and posterior rectus sheath fuse in the midline to form the fibrous linea alba and then fuse on each lateral side of the rectus abdominis muscle to form the linea semilunaris. And there you have it. You're ready to see your first abdominal operation, knowing a bit of anatomy that will make you look like a pro. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe for more content and videos just like this.